Hey guys, welcome to the start of another restoration series. For those of you who have been watching me for a while, this should look fairly familiar. It is another Admiral. This will be a little bit different though, because it's actually from a combo set. This is not one of my sets. This is a uh, local vintage enthusiast who had a, has a few sets and he contacted me. I think he saw me on YouTube. And how can I refuse somebody local who is willing to drop off the chassis? And it's an Admiral set, which I'm quite familiar with. Plus, uh, he has some spare chassis, so shouldn't be any problem if, uh, some, uh, if we need uh, some parts like flyback or yoke or something. Alright, so this was just dropped off. It's going to be an electronic only restoration. There's no way I want a combo set coming into my place. Just don't have the room. Even though these are fairly small as combos go, it's still pretty big. So I've got the TV chassis and the power supply amp. I'll uh, rig up one of my speakers and I don't think there'll be an issue with the radio phonograph. The Admiral combos are pretty Self-contained in that the radio and phonograph uh, have their own uh, power supplies and everything. The phonograph, I think, just runs right off the AC line and it plugs into uh, the, uh, I think, the radio or or possibly the uh, the lower chassis amp. And the of the radio is uh, self-contained as well. So should be no problem running this with just the TV. It's 12-inch sets, unlike most of mine, which are 10-inch sets. So this, I think, will be... Very, very similar to the Admiral 24C16 I did. I think that was also a, uh, well, let's see. I can't remember if it was a 30B1 or a 20B1. It's 20B1, okay. I think that's what my 24C16 is. Regardless, they're all fairly similar. Let's see, screws are already off of this. And I spliced in power cord. Huh, odd that this is in such good shape, but uh, I spliced in a new power cord. Well, I'll, I'll unwrap that at some point to make doubly sure it's safe. No idea about the condition of the CRT 12 LP4. So it had a loose base at some point, so we wrapped electrical tape around it. Not a bad way to go. Certainly in a pinch it'll, it'll do. Uh, spare tube floating around up here. I don't see any missing from any of the sockets, though, so I'm not sure where that came from exactly. Quick peek in here. So, what I want to do uh, first is just to check out the basic stuff. So, let's see, I'll tip this on its side and take a peek underneath. I want to make sure the picture tube is good. I want to check inside the flyback, look underneath to see if anything's blown apart. And uh, check out the power supply too after I'm done with this. So, here's a look underneath the chassis. First uh, impression is not too bad. Not too bad. It looks like all the important stuff is here. Like sometimes the IF uh, shields are missing. I like working on these Admirals, not just because I've picked up a few and I kind of like the cabinet design, but easy to work on, very reliable, and they work quite well once they're restored. So you got plenty of room under here. And uh, pretty well designed too. A few things to, uh, a few design flaws. One is this focus control up here. The earlier ones were lower wattage, I think 2 or 3 watts, the later ones are 5 watts, beefier, and I think that's what this is. And the same coated power resistors, but they're hardly the only manufacturer that use those. These can oxidize and go open. I'll just replace that, whether it's good or not. And we got one cap here that's uh, seen better days. A bunch of insides have oozed out. <laughs> I probably shorted out. One end kind of blew out. Might have been what uh, removed the set from service. There's a replacement. So it's seen a little bit of servicing. A 
but uh, I don't know, hold on, it's probably a newer cap there too. I'm not sure, I'm seeing a number of these with these plastic outer coatings, there's another one. I think all the originals would have been like this cardboard, not the, not the, not this. On the other hand, that, well, it looks like it's probably the original, but it might not be. It's got a strap on it, but uh, it's just soldered on there, so could have been replaced. At least whoever replaced these, assuming this is a replacement, looks like they went to the trouble to uh, unsolder the original and unwrap it and wrap the new leads around. I don't know. enough of these that assuming all the critical stuff is, is good and I'll work on a deal with the guy to uh, you know, go ahead with the restoration. Um, I'm just going to be shotgunning the caps. Uh, I've done enough of these, I, I know it's not worth uh, messing around with. And that includes the mica caps inside here, as you saw me recently do. If you were watching me troubleshooting weak sound on an Admiral 24A12, which has a very, very similar 20A1 chassis, 20B1. Ah, I think the only difference might be it's a 12 inch pitcher tube, and I think there's slightly different drive uh, components on the flyback to boost the output voltage just a little bit. Or uh, the uh, the yoke, maybe. Now back to the top side. I want to take a look inside the high voltage cage. Notice this uh, yellowy tinge to everything. That is from the cadmium corroding I believe it's a cadmium sulfide that has the yellowy greenish look and cadmium oxide is more white and powdery. Notice this is pretty loose, but it's a couple quarter inch nuts that can tighten down, it shouldn't be no problem. But before I can really dive into this in earnest, I'm gonna finish off these predictors. And it seems it seems like I haven't been making a whole lot of progress on anything lately. You're right, I haven't. Partly because of the weather, but uh, more so because uh, of work. When I say work, I don't mean this putzing around with old TVs kind of work. I mean work work that actually pays the rent, like my programming day job. Got a lot going on. It's taking up an awful lot of my time. It's big projects. Deadlines coming up, so. This is what I actually do for fun after work, usually late at night. Eh, looks pretty good there. And, these flybacks are very, well, one should say they're very common, but many, many sets in the late 40s use them. Actually, going back to the first RCA, the 630TS, it's what Thord Arson replacement calls a fly one. For sure, all the early admirals use them. I think all the early RCAs use them, and all, all the clones. So I've got a few spares on hand. So let's check out these tubes. Admiral. Just curious to see how many might be original. It's an Admiral, it's an Admiral. Generally, if you see a lot of uh, original branded tubes that are the same kind of font, it's a pretty good indication it's a low hour set. It's a high hour set, they would of course replace more of the tubes. Another Admiral, Sylvania. So it looks like. He, Probably more than half of the tubes have been replaced. So I imagine this has seen a bit of use. Right now, let's check the picture tube. Which is a rebuild. So I recognize that font. It's, uh, I think, National Video Corp or something like that of Chicago. There's a local rebuilder. There we go. And it says national is NAT apostrophe L, Video Corp, Chicago. 12 LP4, and yep, that sure is a loose base. Oh, I didn't mean to imply that restoring vintage electronics doesn't really work. Of course it is. It's just not how I currently make a living. Alright, so let's check the picture tube. A low voltage setting back from when I was testing predicted pitch tubes. Right, this thing's filthy, so. Let's have to see what's 
going on. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's going. It's very hard to see. Looks like, uh, well, I don't know, you can see the, the heater a bit, a little bit better than that, but if it's a rebuild, maybe they put a different gun in there than I'm used to seeing. Ooh, very responsive cutoff. Nice. It's a very good sign. Missions aren't so hot though. In fact, they're they're bad. Not so bad it wouldn't make an image, but as good as I like it to be. Pretty erratic too. Just wrapping on the uh, CRT base. Not uncommon when you first power these up, I've found that uh, you can get some erratic readings for the first few minutes. Probably just junk burns off. Yeah, let this sit for a while, but even as is, it certainly isn't dead. It's been about 20 minutes and things have improved considerably. The emissions are about as good as you're ever going to see in the black and white picture tube of this vintage. And as for the life test, almost solid. So, as I said before, always, 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 always let these sit for at least 20 minutes, if not an hour, before assessing the emissions. Alright, so, picture tube, excellent. Um, now I'm going to pull up the power supply and take a quick look at that. And assuming that looks okay visually, what I'm considering doing is tacking in a replacement for that one cap that's obviously failed and attempting a power up. I'm not as concerned with these sets because one, I know they're pretty darn rugged. Two, I've got to plenty of spare parts. And three, these are fused. It's dual fuse and they're hard to see because it's behind the horizontal amplitude, but there's one main fuse for the set and there's a fuse for the flyback. So there we go. Just I got this open, I'll double check that those are correct. Curious are the two different sizes. I've seen in the service notes that they mentioned that early versions of this might have one fuse and they suggest adding a second uh, but that is a single block I'm guessing the smaller one would be, would be the quarter amp fuse for the flyback and the larger one is for the whole set which I think would be a couple of amps so between these fuses and circuit breaker and the uh, PR57 I'm not that worried plus of course I keep an eye on everything that's assuming the power supply doesn't <laughs> have something obvious wrong with it. Here's the power supply and audio amp. So unlike the 30A1s that I did a few videos on, it says one power transformer. The 30A1s have dual, one for the higher B+, plus, one for the lower B+. Plus. This they simplify things a little bit. This is like the second generation. It's down to one big old transformer. And this has push-pull output. It's so one difference between the TV-only chassis and the combo chassis. Push-pull, uh, I think these are 6K6s. I've also seen some that I think use a 6Y6. Yeah, 6K6. This is very dusty. Should be tube numbers in the metal. Yep, yeah, 6K6. Alright, so it's probably all original. So one thing I want to do with both chassis is get all this dust off, take it outside or in the back porch and get some compressed air on that. 
as far as underneath goes. Well, I think it's a little bit different. Well, first off, let's look at the components. So I have not seen canned ohm resistors used before in these Admiral lower chassis. So this, this is a bit different from what I'm used to seeing. Don't like these. They tend to go open. So I'll probably want to replace these. Now you can get modern ones in aluminum housing that mount the chassis, but they're much smaller. And I would have to uh, drill some mounting holes for those. Otherwise, these, these big old modern wire wound power resistors maybe get twice the wattage that they're originally rated for and mount them kind of close to this. Modern resistors can take heat a lot better, and if you mount it close, or maybe so it's making contact to the metal, I think you'd be okay. I'm not, I'm not I'm no expert on replacing cand ohm resistors, that's for sure. Now, something else I haven't seen before is this. That's got to be for the radio and or phonograph part. So this, this will go to the speaker, and there's... This might have two speakers in it. Let's see. The, well, the twisted pair, that's probably going to the speaker, but there's also these that are rubber-coated and falling apart. Or maybe those just both go to the same point. Let's see. Oh, hard to say. Hard to say. Man. All right, well, one set of wires is getting replaced, that's for sure. Now uh, this might be a field coil as well, so there might be one for the power supply and one for the uh, voice coil. There, yeah, this is going to require a little more study than I realized. Well, if it is a field coil speaker, I might have a little more trouble hooking power this up without it being present. And likewise, what the heck is this going to? Um. This might go to a pilot light. Probably one of these pairs of wires goes to a little pilot light in the bottom of the cabinet. And then there's this. So, on my sets I've got this. This goes to the TV chassis. Haven't seen one with a grounding braid before. It's a nice touch. A grounding strap, whatever you want to call that. And then this. So, uh... Yeah, I'm gonna have to do uh have to try to dig up the service info on the specific model and um see about what I can do to power this without having all the components present. You know, it's not gonna, so I can't just plug this in and fire it up because I got this rubber crumbling wire here and I don't know what this goes to and I don't know what this is supposed to go to. Alright, well, so that will be the next order of business, I think, is to try to find accurate service info for this. Here's a chassis after a bit of cleaning, which made a huge difference, I think. Uh, it's basically rust-free. Uh, it's just a lot, of, a lot of dust and dirt. So, I uh, did look at the service info for this, that they combined it with the 20A1 and the 20B1 in SAM service info. Which can get a little confusing because there are a lot of sets covered in that. Some with just TV, some combo. But uh, I did sort it out and I did locate the proper schematic. Uh, the main difference being in the power supply here, which does have, like I said, the push-pull output. Well, I also talked to the set's owner, which is a, a good thing to do because he filled me in on a lot of details I wasn't aware of. For one, uh, he told me what these wires go to. So this is power for the phonograph. I think it's just 120 volts AC just to drive the, uh, the motor. The crumbly, nasty wire goes to the pilot light. And the two heavy wires go to the speaker, which is a permanent magnet speaker. So, no problem there. I'll replace these wires so they don't short out. And uh, I'll just leave these. You can splice them back in when he gets the set back. And I'll dig up a permanent magnet speaker for testing purposes. Now, as far as running this set, uh, without the other components, yes, you can indeed. And that's outlined how to do it in the service info. And it turns out he has the original owner's manual and... The little gizmo you need to run this without the phonograph and radio, which is just a heavy piece of metal shaped in a U 
that goes into here that provides filament continuity. I guess the mode switch resides on the radio. And when you put it in AM or phono mode, it cuts filament juice to the TV. So to get this powered up, you just have to short out two of these pins. I'll rig something up, no problem. Well, he also told me that he had powered up the set. And he did get a raster of sorts. So I don't need to go through and check the flyback and the yoke and all that. We're pretty confident that all that is good. Also, he has a spare chassis. Either a 20A1 or a 20B1. So if uh, any of these critical components are bad, he has spares available. Well, something else, he said this had a brightener on it, which I found rather curious considering how good the picture tube tested. So I expect one of two possibilities. One, it was a shady serviceman, did a house call, did a dim picture for some other reason, and he just slapped on a brightener just to make a quick buck. Or it was uh, actually in the shop and they couldn't figure out what was wrong with it and why the picture was dim, so they slapped on a brightener. Like maybe the high voltage was a little bit low, but obviously it works just fine without one, so it's not going back on this set. So, uh, like I said, I got it all cleaned up now, so it's not so nasty to work on. And uh, I think I'm just going to get to, uh, to, to recapping. I, for sure I want to uh, replace the one cap that was blown open. And uh, maybe check some of the uh, resistors, big power resistors for continuity, and then uh, yeah, maybe I will maybe I will uh, try powering this set up, at least with the rectifiers out, because I want to make sure that that shorting bar trick works, and that uh, I do get juice to the whole set, so I can continue on and definitely power this up and test it while it's up on my workbench.